Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Lion's Table. Let's take a moment to enter into the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let God's word, which is truth, fill us and give us strength. Let us contemplate his great love for us and his sacrifice on the cross, his mercy and his grace and promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The word who was at the beginning was with God and is God. We are obligated to thank God for you all the time, brothers, as is fitting, because your faith is growing more and more, and your love for one another is increasing. That's why we boast among God's churches about your perseverance and faith in the face of all the persecution and affliction you're enduring. All this is clear evidence of God's righteous judgment, and so you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for you which you are suffering. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Amen and amen. Indeed, brothers and sisters, your faith is growing all the time. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Philippians 1, 29. Strengthening the souls of the disciples and encouraging them to continue in their faith, we must endure many hardships to enter to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Acts fourteen twenty two. And from first Peter chapter three verses fourteen through twenty two, which is about suffering for righteousness. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, do not be shaken. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give a defense to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that is in you. But respond with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who slander you may be put to shame by your good behavior in Christ. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit, in whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison, who disobeyed long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In the ark, a few people, only eight souls were saved through water. And this water symbolizes the baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. 1 Peter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grievous grief in various trials. And from 1 Peter 2, verse 20, How is it to your credit if you are beaten for doing wrong and you endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. Amen. And now reading Hebrews 12, 4 through 14. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take lightly the discipline of the Lord, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, for the, for the Lord dis disciplines the one he loves, and he chastises every son he receives. Amen. Endure suffering is des discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you do not experience discipline like everyone else, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Furthermore, we have all had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Should we not much more submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a short time as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good so that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your limp hands and weak knees. 
Make straight paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Pursue peace with everyone, as well as holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Indeed, folks, living in the Spirit is our call to persevere. Living in the Spirit means to stop believing in what the flesh can do for you. Stop believing and following what the flesh tells you to do or what you deserve to have in the flesh. Stop looking at yourself through the eyes of the flesh. Stop trusting in the abilities you have in the flesh. That's why we do not wage war as the world does. We put off or put away the flesh. Colossians 2.11 Thus, our persevering in the spirit is living for God. We desire to be sanctified and cleansed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And that cleansing becomes a refining as we walk in the Spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ. He is refining impurities in us so that we will be given more, will be expected, and will be blessed more so that we can run with endurance. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with endurance and perseverance the race marked out for us. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Jesus replied, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear wars of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yet, yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many parts of the world as well as famines. But this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. When these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local councils and beaten in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. For the good news must first be preached to all nations. But when you are arrested and stand trial... Don't worry in advance about what you will say. Just say what God tells you at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 13, verses 5 through 11. And friends, having endurance and perseverance is probably the hardest thing to have, especially as persecution increases and as difficulty increases, especially those of us who live here in the United States and in Western countries where we have it pretty good. We have all our, most of our material needs are met and then extra and besides. And uh, so we've never really had to persevere or endure to the limit that many Christians, brothers and sisters throughout history have had to do it in those many in other countries today. But our turn will come and God is for us and he wants us to succeed. He wants us to run the race and finish the race and not fall down. It says those who endure to the end will be saved and you can do it. And you have the encouragement of your brothers and sisters uh, and, and us here at Lion's Table. We are always to, here to encourage you and give you uh, give you strength, spiritual strength, for the, the race that we all must run in these last days. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday edition of Lion's Table. We hope it's been a blessing to you and that you will uh, join us again next time. <laughs>